more about that group. Um, and describe yourself as a general IT enthusiast and, a, and an aspiring IT security expert. His eight years of operational leadership focused on complex problem solving. He's an engaged team leader with more than seven years experience implementing multi-tiered information technology solutions, adaptive defining IT requirements and managing client relationships during IT strategy consulting engagements. His track record includes addressing com complex issues and exhibiting professional business conduct. And he's been with PCMG since February of 2016. He's also a uh, former member of the military, and so we are delighted. Please join me in welcoming Dave. So I'd like to do two things before we begin. Uh, first start with thank yous. I'd like to thank Ken for very much and in introducing me to you as well as giving me the opportunity to speak today. And if you could, in the back is Jim with the camera. He's actually the one that offered me this opportunity to meet with Ken. So I want to say thank you very much, Jim. We met through Toastmasters and here I am today. So that's the first thing. My name is Dave Thomas II, as you all know, and I'm here to talk to you about IT. But let me address something in the room. Last week, we saw Cindy Porter. Was anybody here for that? Oh, okay, a couple of people. So what Cindy does is that she works with potential clients, and what she helps is with wardrobe, change of hair, things like that. Most of you are sitting in this room saying, this guy <laughs> cannot be more than 35 years old. Here's what I'll go and say. Before working with Cindy, this was me right here. Beer trim, hair trim, and a boatload of anti-aging gel. You might be able to get down to this. So, work with Cindy, she might be able to help. <laughs> so why am I here for today? These are my goals in the agenda. I'm going to help tell three stories, because I hopefully you'll take those three stories home with you. If you haven't heard of Simon Sinek, we're gonna listen to what Simon has to say about your why. I'll have a 10 minute activity I will have three teams that you could potentially join in information security, and I'll explain those. I will have questions at the end. Trust me, I'm not here to talk for an hour and a half. I'm here to talk for way less than that. I will have my contact information at the very end. So before we begin, does anybody have any questions? <laughs> Excellent. Great. So yes, my name is Dave Thomas II. Uh -huh. My dad is this guy right here, not the guy on the other side over there. Uh -huh. Most of you have heard of Wendy's, but this gentleman is my dad. When people say, is Dave Thomas really your dad? I say, well, of course, he is my dad. <laughs> so, this is my story. Um, I loved outdoor adventure, I still do. What I found is when I was doing these outdoor adventures that sometimes my plans were great, when I thought we were gonna end up well, sometimes didn't end up as well as I would like. Case in point, my rappel. I had done this rappel hundreds of times backwards. Most people would go down 100 feet on a stone cliff backwards. That just makes sense. And I thought to myself, why don't we go down forwards? Why not? You can do it. So this was my 100th time. Two thirds of the way down, there's this little ledge. There's nothing underneath this ledge. But most of the time going backwards, you just jump back, you let yourself down, and you swing on this ledge. But here's the problem. When you're standing 70 feet above this ledge, how much rope do you let out before you stop? I don't know, so I just jumped. And this was the perfect picture to go and explain that no, I didn't hit my head on the rock, but it looks like I did. So a lot of these adventures that I get myself into were a great idea at the time, and they turned out okay, but when people are looking at it, they're like, how did you do that? To answer your question, I don't know, I just tried it. Left hand side, this is me hitting a golf ball off the top of a mountain. Why? Because you can. If you've never done it before, you should definitely go and try it. Because here's my story. Does anybody here play golf, play golf, understand the concept of the golf? Okay, cool. We all get the idea. So Tiger Woods, hopefully it's a household name, hits the ball six, seven hundred yards. Great powerhouse. How many people can say they've hit a ball farther than Tiger Woods? <laughs> when you start to do life hacking, this is what you get to go and do. On top of a mountain, I carry my own golf club, my own ball. And has anybody been on top of a Rocky Mountain? Anybody seen the grass up there? I have to do my own grass. So at the end of the day, I hit a ball farther than Tiger Woods. It's all about your ideas and your thoughts. You can break the bear. So when I thought, how do I combine my love for the outdoors with my sense of adventure? I thought to myself, why don't I join the Marine Corps? 
And this was not when one war was going on, but there were two wars going on, and my mother was thrilled when I said, hey mom, I want to go and drive tanks with the Marine Corps. Absolutely thrilled. But she came around, and the Marine Corps had other ideas for me. They said, hey Dave, we noticed that you like cameras, you seem to be great talking on both of the radios at the same time, and then also you play video games and you have a love for computers. How about we make you a communications officer? Most people in the room say, what's the communications officer? It's a IT project manager. That was my role in the Marine Corps to make sure all of IT was working. So for six months, I went to school on how to become an IT project manager. For the rest of my Marine Corps career, I identified as a husband. I had one child when I was in the Marine Corps with my wife. I was a Marine communications officer, the IT project manager that we talked about. And then on the 18th of November, 2015, I thought, hey, that's a good idea to stop where we were, transition out of the Marine Corps after eight years. That's when I decided to transition. But before then, I told my wife, hey, I want to transition out of the Marine Corps two years in advance. Started working on my master's degree, started getting some certifications so I'd be marketable. I told her, I promise my plan will go well and I'll have a job before getting out. Well, some things don't always come to the way we plan it. So I got out on the 18th of November, no job. So let me ask you, this is my transition story. Does anybody in this room feel like they've lost their identity? Does anybody in this room feel like they don't have a lack of purpose? How about financial stress, marital stress, family stress? Does anybody feel in that? Yes. That was me two years ago. But here I am today. I'm here to go and give you hope that you're going to transition through this. It took me a while. I got out in November, and PCMG offered me a job in February. Four months over the holidays was stressful, but if you're here, it's you're here for the right reasons. You're going to make it. So thank you very much for coming. So what am I today? I'm a husband. I have two young boys now. I am a Marine who's no longer in transition. I am a field account executive. Most people say, what is that? I'm a sales guy. So I'm also a full-time student in cybersecurity. And these are my aspirations, is to talk to people about cybersecurity. I'm always aspiring to be a cybersecurity expert. And the last thing is, I'm also an aspiring speaker. So thank you for coming today. You are fulfilling my dream. So that's my story. Um, here's what I learned from it. Attitude matters. Whether you're here because you want it to be, did anybody plan to transition and have no job in their plan? Good, I'm really glad because I didn't have that idea as well. But don't shut up all over yourself. You should have done this or you should have done that. It's okay, you're here. Your plans may not go the way that you planned it out. When I jumped over the side of that rappel, didn't know that was gonna happen but we all take a leap of faith at some point. The other thing, this was from my sister. Um, why I bring her up is because I want you to realize that you can get others to help you who may be younger. She is eight years younger than I am, and she's helping me during the tough times as well. Her thing that really helped me during the last two years is you cannot change the past, nor can you live in the future. All you have is the present. And when you live in the present moment, you start to have less stress. Look, I didn't believe her. Always living for tomorrow. You know, just around the bend. I'll be that person that I want to be. All you have is today. You don't get it back. So live the moment that you can. Her idea is that you're vulnerable right now. Use it to your advantage. When you're vulnerable, you're willing to change. Otherwise, when you're comfortable, why would you change? So right now, live it. Really take advantage of it. You can go and do anything. And one of the things that she does is her company is called Trodo. They came up with Trotality, which means vulnerability. They are working to go and help individuals by helping them work out. But also, when you go to the gym, let's talk about you holistically. When you're there going through the emotions, sometimes you're just there going through the emotions. But when somebody says, hey, how's your day going? How do you spend most of your time? What's going on with you? People open up. And that's one of the greatest things that they're bringing to the workout area is that when you go to the gym, you also get to talk about yourself from a holistic picture. So I'm really proud of her for that, for working on it. And again, as I said, bottom line, you are all here. You're all going to get through it. 
That's what I really noticed with this program. So congratulations on that. That was my story. How about I talk to you about information security? Some of you came here to hear about other people's story in information security. Let me share a couple of stories and hopefully these people can go and relate to you. Eric Conrad is one of the instructors in my master's program. Great guy. I had to really ask him, you know, how did you get your start in IT security? Except for the Carney, the Fishmonger, and the Disgraced Reality Star, <laughs> everything else that he's done, he's done. If you can't say, Dave, listen, possibly, it's information security. There's no way I can relate. There wasn't one story of how you describe yourself that won't relate to information security, and I hope you take that away from today as well. If you've never been a pro wrestler and wrestled a bear, you don't know what you're not living and experiencing, so try that. This gentleman is now an ethical hacker, somebody who breaks into systems for fun. So today, here's some of the stories I'd like to share. Has anybody not made it through high school? You don't have to raise your hand, but do you know people that haven't made it through high school? They still end up in information security, and they're some of the best people at it. They think outside the box and not through formal education. Those are the people that haven't made it all the way through, but they're here today doing great work. How about the ones that made it into college all the way through high school, but didn't necessarily make it through college? We have those too. There's a lot of people that, because they started the program and didn't make it, think of themselves as a failure, but you know what? They're still a success. They are great minds in this industry. And it doesn't matter what your background is, male, female, we're all here to go and succeed in information security. Continuing on this path, congratulations, you made it through school. Now what? Some people find out, like me, I was a history major. Okay, what am I gonna do? Marine Corps thought, he could be the calm guy, the most technical MOS in the Marine Corps. Here you go. It worked out. So you can also go and think of information security, IT. You can do it. And I'll go and wrap up with this. If I haven't said anything that you can relate to, Please, I tried going through all these different stories, a pizza restaurant owner, a peach picker, I mean systems administration. The information security community that you can join has all sorts of backgrounds. So please really consider it. Here's just some more. Um, I was really interested in the FAA weather observer at O'Reilly. <coughs> There's a lot of air traffic around there. I don't know what else weather would be impacting, but I thought that was a good one. But here's the last thing I'll go and wrap it up with. This is the very best thing. This could be you. This could be your story. This could be possibly where you start today. I heard some people have worked in IT. I've also worked IT, that's great that we can relate on that. I've also heard stories that people work in the pharmaceutical industries. That's also applicable to information security. If you don't think that you can't get into IT security, or IT, please just try because you can end up here talking to people one day as well and being excited about it. So story number three. That's you. Seriously, come join us. Who in here would really like to go and work and get paid? Better yet, who would not? That's a much easier <laughs> question to ask. Okay, cool. So we're both on the same page. In 2019, worldwide, how about a two million job shortage? Two million people. That's how many we're missing worldwide. In the United States, it's about a million right now. You can go and fulfill those roles. So that's in IT? IT security, specifically. IT security? Yes, ma'am. So what is IT security? IT security, which I'll get into this very next slide, to me is thinking outside the box when it comes to how do you take in information security. The roles that you've done, things that you've done, you take a look at it from one view. IT security takes it a look at it from another view. Operations, security, things like that, ties it all together. But the most important part, what we look to go and do, is to go and support whatever your role is, either operations or things like that, and go and make sure that the job you want to do is secure so nobody else can go and take it away from you. And I'll demonstrate that on the next slide. So going back to the one million jobs that we need to fill, this is Mr. Jack Daniel. Um, he is somebody that I do go and reach out to who I do look up and respect. And thank you, Jack. I really appreciate it for helping me out with this story today. 
He's the one that encouraged me to make sure that I was on the right track when I came to talk to you today. Yes, he does exist, Mr. Jack Daniel. He is a little bit older than me, he's probably about 40, 45. <laughs> but at the end of the day, he's really helped shape our industry, and here's how. Jack created B-Sides. What is B-Sides? If you've never worked in information security but you're curious about it, please go to a B-Sides. If you may not have the funds to get to a B-Sides, there's one in DC every couple of months. What B-Sides allows you to go and do is understand the hacking community and see what information security can go and offer you. More importantly, if you volunteer, it only costs you your time. How did I get into this right here? Um, I was a speaker wrangler, I know, kind of interesting. I made sure that during the course of this entire conference for two days, the speakers got to the right room, their computers were working, and they had water. I mean, for a free conference, I'll take it. But I was able to go and network with these speakers, talk with them, and say, hey, what are you talking about today? Does this interest me? The other thing is, while I was at this conference, I got to go see all the vendors. I got to go and help people as I was walking around. And the only thing that it cost me was my time. And that's right here in DC at B-Size. You can go and see when the schedule is next. So Jack is really trying to help people get into cybersecurity. And there was a different name, oh, sorry, a different gentleman by David. Loved the name, so I took the quote. And he said, this is the right place to go and introduce people to cybersecurity. This is the right place to go and pull people into information security. Because no matter where you are, how many years of experience you have, or you don't think you have, we're all here to go and help you. And this is a great place to go and start. So that's all I recommend. Now, why? Why is the most important thing I'm going to ask you? Why would you get your start in information security? The person that I look to really understand my why, why I do what I do, and you all have your why, is through a gentleman called Simon Sinek. Has anybody heard of Simon Sinek? Perfect. Has anyone not heard of Simon? Highly recommend it. Great TED Talk. He wrote a, a book called Start With Why. Gave a 20 minute presentation on um, how why really impacts you, how businesses can go and use why. And then, and most importantly, I love books, but I hate reading. Has anybody tried Audible? Mm -hmm. Oh, if you haven't, then I will send this book to you for free. Great investment. I, ever since I started it two years ago, haven't stopped. So if you like this book or any other ones that I've read, please let me know at the end. So we'll start with why. This is Simon. <coughs> this is his golden circle. And what he went and described is when most companies come up to you, they go and talk about three things, just like you would as well. Those three things is, what do you do? Every organization kind of knows what they do. They kind of know how they do it. But have you ever stopped and asked yourself, why? Why do we do the things that we do? And what he described was that the companies that say, we have, I'm going to Definitely paraphrase from Simon. The very best products, the very best minds. Would you like to go and buy a computer from us? Just like, it doesn't make sense, but let's reverse the order here. When he talks about with Apple, it says, we think differently in everything that we do. We think that people should go and challenge the status quo. We go to, as best as possible, to, live, to deliver the best possible product to you. We just happen to make computers. Would you like to buy one? That changes the entire process. That really stuck with me that if you can find out what your why is and align it with an organization, you're going to go and do great work. And that's why today, that's one of those things that I hope you take away, is finding your why. And hopefully, we'll get to this activity that your why that we'll find today can coincide with information security. Because today, we're going to talk to you about an activity. So we get to go and discuss why you would want to join the information security. And if you can't think of reasons, I did. I work, I work in the food industry, or I work in pharmaceuticals, or I work in database programming. Okay, tell me why you can't. Because I'm willing to relate that I think we can find you a place in information security. 
I think we can find you a place in IT. So if you can, take about the next 10 minutes or so, um, write down your why that really defines who you are, if you would want to join the information security community, or write down some reasons you can't. Hey, it's not for me, you know, we'll go from there. So I'll give you until about well, 10 to 50, we'll go from there. And do I have any questions before I begin? Go ahead. So information security, for me, that's a new term. Mm -hmm. So I've heard of information technology, of course, yep. and cybersecurity. Yes. Can you kind of, uh, information security, is yep. that? So cybersecurity is all encompassing to me. It is everything from, again, information security when it relates to IT. But let's talk about cybersecurity when it comes to a business. If you're running your business on one database, and that one database were to com be compromised for whatever reason, fire, flood, that you name it, does that business exist? No. Mm -hmm. So that's cybersecurity. It's a part of information security, but you've got to think about the technical controls when it comes to fire, that flood. That's a part of cybersecurity. It's all encompassing. Information security looks at, hey, when you have these documents that are created on a hard drive or on a computer, how are you safeguarding that data? How are you preventing access to it? It's a certain subset when it comes to cybersecurity. Does that help? Good. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So we'll take the next step. So cybersecurity, you're saying it's a subset of? Oh, I would say information security is a subset of cybersecurity because cyber is all encompassing. Information security would fall underneath cyber. Okay. Because mm -hmm. uh, everything today is cyber. You're right. Yeah. Products, cyber. So it has to be political, yeah. but would Facebook's uh, laws, or at least uh, allow use of their information fit that category? So Facebook's, uh, for those that you may not know or may know, um, there's a data analytics group Cambridge. that, it, Cambridge, thank you, that enabled them to have access to data from Facebook to go and do analytics on it. It wasn't a data breach because they use the terms of service from Facebook fairly. Now, how they use that data was also a problem. What I've seen from the research that I've done, if you had the Facebook app on, let's say, your phone, and it was Android, you could see how many calls you made, when you missed calls, how many text messages you sent, what time you sent those text messages. Those are the types of things that when you start to profile someone, you can say, how active and how much time should we go and spend on challenging that person to do something? Hey, totally legal. But it's one of those things that ethical, moral, that sort of thing right there. And at the end of the day, when it does hit the front page, as we've seen, is that something you're gonna stand behind? Well, they didn't have permission. They, that I don't know. Because here's the thing, as a developer, if you go and take that data in, what part of the data sets are you looking at? That I don't know. And that's very difficult because you did give Facebook permission to give it to third parties. So that's one of the things that doesn't incorporate the cyber information security. How does that impact your business? Because when you have the CEO, owner, and founder, Mark Zuckerberg, talking about it, that's when you know it's going to impact it. But if you know, hey, is this really a good idea? That's from your background. That's from your own challenging the status quo to say, this is what's been done in the past, but is this the way we should go in the future? Sometimes the answer is no, before you get to where a CEO is having to explain your choices or lack thereof. So that's why I really like cybersecurity. So that does get involved. Thank you. Cool. Cyber is all encompassing. Information security would fall. Yep. Does that answer your question or does that? Yeah. Okay. 
Cybersecurity to me would be physical security. So if you think about um, your doors, your locks, your supply chain, to me that's all part of your cybersecurity risk profile. That may not relate to information security, but it does relate to cyber. Yes, ma'am. What I would say is that in each area in health, you have security issues related to health data. Mm -hmm. So you would add, do it differently when you're dealing with voter data. Mm -hmm. But it's still so you've got to protect that data based on its perspective of whose data it is. Yes. And there's a lot that, to me, there's three things data compliance, mm -hmm. as well as risk compliance. What is your risk? There's a third one when it comes to regulations. Mm -hmm. The lowest bar is, um, besides not having one, <laughs> is uh, regulations. Mm -hmm. I was PCI compliant, but your data was still taken. But did I think about the security controls around it? Did I think somebody could walk into my business and walk out the hard drive that had information on it that was unencrypted? Names, emails, all those types of things that some people just say, hey, that's what we've always done business. And when you join this type of organization and you have your background, you start thinking about it and challenging the status quo, you're gonna see a lot of things that you can't unsee. So, please be aware that when you join us, you're gonna see some things that you can't unsee. And you're gonna think about life very differently. But it's a growing, challenging field that we're looking to go and really get help with and experience from your background. What's the average cost of retraining or retooling this specific purpose? You know, I'm really glad you asked that. Let me hope with that. So, one of the things that I'm going to pass out is information resources. Down at the bottom, we we'll go and address how different programs, different certifications can go and help you. I just happened to go through the SANS Institute. Um, in my opinion, they hired the very best instructors who are in the industry that are doing this every single day. They go and update their curriculum on a rapid basis, and that's where one of the things that you can go and take a look at their costs. Now, SANS is expensive, but you are getting what you are paying for. Did I miss anyone? So on the sheet, what you have in front of you is everything that I've talked about today, some of those quotes, um, B-sides, and I'll get through a couple of things about the million people that were missing in security. I went and cited those in those articles. We'll get to Lance here in a minute. He's gonna talk you through about the opportunities. Moving down to the information security resources, um, taking off about what is technology. There's a few of us who have lived it, and there's a few of us who are just getting into it, so there's a definition right there. Top 10 security careers, if you've never considered it, have a look, that could be you one day. The degrees, certifications that you can go and take a look into, the relevant costs and what you can get, that's under the cybersecurity degrees and careers. SANS training, if you need a reference or if you're interested, please come talk to me. There's a lot of options that you can have through that. And most importantly, getting down to the bottom line. What are the top paying jobs in information security? How much training do you need before you can actually get a job? It's funny that you should ask that because I have a slide and we'll go and address that here coming up shortly. Okay. And I'll see if you can tell me when I'm doing right or wrong. Okay. Go from there. So is anyone not done? Oops, see no hands raised. This is good. So let's start easy. Who in this room said they have at least I can't do this? Okay, perfect. We got one. So everybody else is going to jump on board in information security. We got no, we got two. I like it. Three. I like it. Okay. So can't. Okay. It is going to be challenging. Have you tried? There we go. But have we tried? No. Okay. Question to that? Yeah, it, it was one of the cans with not that they can't do it. It's just the. With, um, Thing, the things I keep hearing, uh -huh. you need a clearance. In some jobs, yes. And that, that's the wall I keep hitting. And that's one of those things to overcome. But taking a look at, do you need a security clearance to go and work at a Fortune 500 company? Do you need a clearance to go and work in healthcare? 
Do you need a clearance to go and work right. other opportunities that where you are, what you're looking at? Yes, running into a security clearance is an issue. But taking a look at the problem to say, what is it in the government work that you like mm -hmm. about what they're doing? Mm -hmm. Because they need information security people as much as the Fortune 500s do, as much as all those other roles. So if there's something that you do like, mm -hmm. there's other options that you may not have considered. That's why we're here to talk about it today. Who feels like, hey Dave, being serious, this is something for my kids, my grandkids. Some people in the room, right grandkids. Anybody feel that? If you feel like this isn't for you because this is for your kids, your great grandkids, right. you kind of missed the boat. Because I'll tell you that you have it. And actually, coming from your background, you're more valuable. So let me give you an analogy. When I talked to Jack about this, I said, he made me realize that somebody coming out of school with all these certs and all these degrees only has four years of relevant experience. Is there someone in this room that hasn't worked for a corporation? Hasn't worked on teams before? Hasn't had years of experience in doing the work that they've done? Does that count as past performance? So as a business owner, if you're going to take 150 to 200K investment on somebody that has maybe four years and a couple of degrees, by somebody who has 20 or 30 years of past experience, where do you think the less risk lies? Exactly. And that's why I'm here to go and talk to you today. There's going to be some things that you have to go and address, but at the end of the day, you've been proven. Hardworking, as well as experience. That's some of the things that you described today. Everybody had three things. You can bring that to information security. And when you say, well, this person I can't because they have all the degrees, you know what? What do you have? Bring it with you. That's one of the lines that I want to take with you. Sometimes they ask for research. That's one of those things that you can get online. B-sides counts. Mm -hmm. Volunteering counts. You may not be getting paid for it, but I guarantee you the work that you are doing online, the opportunities you do go and take, is still very relevant. For example, there's home networks that you can go and monitor. How many people actually are sitting at home looking at their home network, seeing all the electrons flow from your phone to the internet. That counts on a very small scale. You can go and learn so much just by seeing online and learning about your operating system. All of the tools are there. If you have a computer or a smartphone and a router to the internet, you have all the tools. And does anybody not have access to YouTube? There's a lot of training that goes along with it to go and say, hey, I get these things. So what's the next step? Volunteering, what's the next step? Certifications, getting into those roles and those jobs, you're going to get there. Does that help? Or is, oh, just making sure. Yeah. It is a challenging experience. And then look, we're all in it together. I have also lived that as well. So yes, it just takes time. So let's talk about any other camps. Everybody feel like they can jump on board? There's nothing in Toronto? Yes, ma'am. No, how do you know if you have the right background that they're looking for? How do you know if you have the right background that they're looking for? Is that your question? Um, I don't know, to be honest with you. I don't know how to answer that question. Does anybody have any ideas about how you would have the right what background? What are some of the known credentials that they're looking for? Minimum credentials. Um, let's take a look at penetration testing. That's just an area. So a pen tester is a hacker. Let's just put all the cards on the table. We'll talk about it in a minute. But that's a hacker. So you as a hacker, let's say that you wanted to go and do penetration testing. You can get what's called ethical hacking. It's a certification. You can get some more advanced certifications. But at the end of the day, if you have a background in what you've done, for me, it's the Marine Corps. If I really wanted to hack the Marine Corps, I know the language. I know the people. I could easily breeze in to say, this is the data that I need to get to. Mm -hmm. Somebody who's not coming from that background, like logistics, I don't know, Fortune 500 companies, I don't know. But somebody who's worked those areas, can speak the language, knows the topology, it's gonna breeze right in. That's when you take a look at your relevant skills and see your background and what you've done to where you can really apply it to, let's say, penetration testing as an example. Does that answer your question? Perfect. Yes, sir. When you're just using you know, penetration testing, are, are you speaking of uh, phone calls and just Soul phone engineering? Into, okay, it's that not can, just no, it's, no, and actually some of the best things 
do not come from these hacks or the matrix, I'm going to write code and get in. Hey, can you send me the internal phone book of your entire company? Sure. What's the address you want me to send it to? Be there in a minute. So if somebody has your internal phone book, think about the sales they could generate. Think about the way they know your corporate structure. Hey, I just talked to Tom in IT. Can you please give me access to your data? Yeah, Tom said it was good. Just what's the username and password? It happens all the time. Did you have a question? Oh, the, 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 uh, one of the things they've done recently is that they'll have like uh, somebody call and pretend that they're your grandchild. Okay. That they guess for, I, I just need your social security now. Real quick, mm -hmm. I, I got to do this. Mm -hmm. And you think, it, it, you know, and they maybe they someplace out of the country or something like that, and they, they yeah. tell you the story that makes you want to help your grandchild. That's yeah. not your grandchild. Yep. Yeah. Well, I had somebody try to do that. You know, that's unfortunate, but this is the community well, he didn't, you can go he, and help. He didn't, he didn't, yeah. he didn't get any <laughs> But this is the community that you can raise awareness on these specific issues. Think about people who have never heard that story before today. Your loved one's on an airplane, and all of a sudden you get a call from the airline while they're in the air that there's been a terrible plane crash. We need to identify them. Can you please give them their names, their address, and their social security number? You're not thinking. You're under pressure. You want to go and verify. That's what happened in Puerto Rico. People are trying to find loved ones. Oh, we'll connect you with your loved one. I just need all their information. Here you go. Mm -hmm. This is the type of thing, raising awareness, raising the money. Tom, did you have something? Uh, well, I, I don't know if you go into the personal stuff, but I, uh, the reason why I said can is because I, I just uh, been trying to get through the Security Plus certification. OK. Uh, but I failed three times. Mm -hmm. Then I was laid off because I didn't do it in a certain amount of time because it's required by the DOD. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so it made me think that, well, maybe I should be in the side of, you know, if there's security or not at all. Okay. Uh, so. Let's talk about that. Yeah. And we'll go through the certifications because I do have SEC Plus. Let's talk about how you're studying, how you're answering the questions. Because I had a heck of a time getting through some of these certs. Sure. And it's just switching your mindset. And there's a time that if you've done it enough and you've seen it enough times. What was your background? You were the, uh, the, the, the coder, correct? The tester? Uh, tester. Okay. You could probably come in and run circles around me with that. <laughs> Even though I have the training and the cert, you can definitely go and do it better than I can. We're here to help one another. Mm -hmm. So let's move forward. So how do you overcome Oops. the lack of money? Um, volunteering. Mm -hmm. There's organizations. Like you said, your organization would pay for it, correct? Very good, yes. Okay. You're trying to get me Scholarships, grants. Mm -hmm. There is, and I didn't put this on your sheet, if you take a look at grants for information security, we need people. State of Maryland, I think, has something. Yes, yeah, sir. So did they give you any support to sort of make tutoring or mentoring or something to still take your um, sort of that? Oh, no, they only did uh, let me go to the training center to take uh, the course. Mm -hmm. And um, then it was just individual. Like most people didn't, really, they didn't have any formal one. Yeah, I think that's, that's what that's the background is. Yeah. We'll definitely address it offline because now you have my attention. Yeah, yeah. So we talked about the activity. Um, let's talk about the teams that you can join in information security. We have hats, they're black, white, and gray. We also have shirts, they're red, blue, and purple. So black hats, these are your bad hackers. These are the people that we just talked about who want your money because they're your grandson, call them from somebody in. They want money at the end of the day. However, they're gonna get it. You've seen the spam and emails, they're getting pretty good today. Some of them just yeah. hovering over the link, I'm like, that's not going to Citibank's website. Mm -hmm. Sorry, not clicking on that, but it looks legit. Yeah. White hats, if there are any perfect white hat hackers, please call me. Because everyone that I've met in the security community is human, and we're all not perfect. We've done some things, or thought about some things that we shouldn't have done, and said, you know what, had I known more, I would have done it differently. So where do we all fit? Mostly gray hat, more towards the side where we aren't black hat hats. Or some people who do work in information security, also moonlight, as black hats. Not the thing I would do, but I'm saying once you know systems well enough and you can get in, hey, a lot of people need funds. So let's talk about the teams. Red team, hackers, penetration testers. How do you get into some place that you're not supposed to be? How did you do it? We already talked about social engineering. That counts. If you're a sweet talker, 
And you can get the same information that would take me days and lots of computer code and lots of observing, but you pick up the phone and get it, much more efficient than I am, there's a place for you as well. Blue team. Um, I identify more with the blue team because of my IT background. Look, it's one thing to come in and wreck shop, make some phone calls, take it apart an entire business to where they have nothing. But at the end of the day, what value are you providing other than saying, this is how somebody could come in. It's like Clue. This might have been how it was done, but most importantly, how are you going to reduce that risk? How are you going to prevent it in the future? That's where I really identify, because at the end of the day, I get what the red team is doing, but I also want to go and prevent it. And we go through multiple different ways, just how to look at your day and how you use your devices, how you use your data, how you store your information. That's where I come in to go and help. And the best yet, aspiring purple. Red, blue, purple, we're not that creative. So please enjoy that you can know both the red side and the blue side to become very valuable at the end of the day because it all interrelates. So how do we get there? I already talked about, do you like to break into places? <laughs> I do, legally, of course, with permission. Um, blue team, I like to fix things even more, seeing how they've been taken apart, how to make them better. Purple, I, again, I agree that you do not have to choose. You can be both. Many of you have had to re-identify that these are just different classifications, but you can do both very well. How to start. Uh, my only advice to black hats is don't get caught. <laughs> just saying, it's going to be very hard to work afterwards. Not that there haven't been some reformed people. White hats, again, contact me. I don't know who you are, because to me it's all about gray hats. This is the rest of us. Pick your team. Red, blue, purple, as well also Remember your why that you're in information security because that's going to go to the next slide. The secret to success in information security in IT, the question that we asked at the very beginning, here's the answer. Two words. Describes everything. That's what I also put at the very bottom of your letter before my signature. Hard work. You will not get anything in this community unless you spend the time into hard work. Latin. Don't ask me to pronounce it. Look mm -hmm. cool. I put it at the bottom. Mm -hmm. This is one of those things that at the end of the day, it's going to be hard work to get you where you are. And ladies and gentlemen, you've already shown the aptitude because you're here today. You can do it. So who asked about certifications? That's perfect. Here's my journey. 1,200, sorry, 1,210 questions, 29.5 hours of testing. That's just the testing aspect. That isn't the studying. That isn't the late nights of frustration. That is just the sweet testing time to get to where I am right here. And still, I feel like I'm just starting. But here's the things that I still have to figure out. The Fortune 500 companies, the background, and all the other stuff that you've had experience in, I still have to go and do that. So you may look at this as, oh my gosh, almost 30 hours of testing. That takes a long time. You're right, it does. But at the end of the day, I still don't have the experience that you bring to the table. But I'll go and talk to you about mine. Security Plus, it was my first certification. It told me that I could do security. It took me a long time, a lot of repetition, and a lot of studying. But the other thing I also did was I worked with others to go and help me study for it. Because there were some things that I just didn't get. And I'm hoping we can work together to find out if you can still do it. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, when I took it, I think I'm a lifetime member. Most of these certifications expired. This was very early on in my career. It was 90 questions. I knew if I passed it once, I would never have to worry about it again. They've updated and revised the certification, so it's going to be a little bit more challenging, but still. Who's heard of CISSP? Perfect. Let me tell you my story. I took it twice, and I want to ask you, did I fail it the first time? So normally, Pearson views the provider of the facility that you're going to go and take the certification. They have multiple papers that you sign that you swear you will not talk about the test and what's in it. Cheat. They don't want you to cheat. They won't bring in anything else. They want you to cheat. So I knew that was going to happen. Showed up the day prior, made sure all the paperwork was filled out, knew where I was going. Things were good. The day of the test, I show up. 
I knew I had 15 minutes before the test began to go and do that mental preparation. Write down everything that I could think of on a piece of paper before I begin. Here's the problem. CISSP certification is owned by ISC Squared. ISC Squared has a policy that if you do not hit the OK button within five minutes of when the test begins, it is locked out. You just lost several hundred dollars. And I was not the first person to experience this. So you tell me if I failed. <laughs> I felt like I failed and follow directions. But at the end of the day, I hope that if you ever take this test, don't do it like I did my first time. That's the only story that I'll go and share with you. And if you know anybody at ISC Squared that owns this that can change that policy, please do, because there were other students like me who've been impacted by that. It's just not fair in my opinion. Second time, I did pass. It took me another six hours. But it's 250 questions, and to me it's really encompassing of cyber. And here's what I mean. It takes physical security into play. It takes a look at information security and the theories behind it about confidentiality, integrity, availability when it comes to information, and it pulls it all together to an encompassing thing. There was stuff that I was studying in CISSP that I had no idea related to, uh, to information security. Let me give you an example. Who's thought of fire extinguishers and the different ways that you put out fires in the data center? I know I hadn't, but there were test questions on it. Is it a good idea to go and dump a whole bunch of water on running servers? How about the other methods to go and put out fires with different flame retardants? How about things that suck the air out of the data center? These are the type of things that are all encompassing in cyber that was covered by CISSP. Great certification, hard one, gives you a good foundation for the principles. PMP, Project Management Professional. I have that cert. It kind of speaks to, if you come up with an idea, do you know how to go and drive the program? Do you understand the problems that are going to come from it? It's not a security cert, but I think it's one of those that is going to affect you, I'm oh, sorry, greatly enhance you. The last ones, GAC, the Global Information Assurance Council. Uh, hopefully that's it right there. But they have a whole bunch of certifications that SANS teaches to. So SANS is the, the teaching elements. GIAC is its own separate entity that will test you. It's not fair for the person teaching the course to write the test and then test you on it. Just one of those things that they said, hey, there could be a conflict of interest. So they gave it to GIAC. I started with GSEC. It was like CISSP, which you actually got to got, I'm sorry, you actually got on your computer and started typing things into your computer to see stuff coming back. Just because you know there's a problem, how are you valuable in fixing it? That's where GSEC came in and said, hey, you get all of CISSP or most of it, but then we'll show you the tools to go and help you become a little bit more marketable. GCIH, if you do have a problem, how do you handle it? What are the right steps? When do you contact a lawyer, and when do you contact outside authorities? That's where GCIH can go and help you. Very challenging. This, I will say, is the most challenging course that I got into, and that was forensics. First, it was phone forensics, which computers and phones, they're similar, but they're really separate. The other thing is forensics. If you like a good mystery, that's what forensics can go and do for you. That was frustrating because I didn't understand the tools. It was very different from my background, but it was also rewarding because now I can take a look at people's phones and say, hey, do you have malware on it? That app that you gave permission to from Android and Facebook, what is it actually doing in the background? I can start to see those things right there. The last two, um, intrusion analysis. When a packet goes over a wire and you start to see things do something, that's what intrusion analysis takes a look at and the Enterprise Defender. So now you can go all the way down to the packet level, but bring it all the way up to the CIS system level. Yes, ma'am. Is there an order in which you take the... Nope. You take yes, ma'am. Yep. And actually, SANS really has a good website, and it's in your resources, and you can see a progression. You can see how all these fields come together, and they also have a management track. You understand it, you can leverage your background, you don't want to go technical, but you do want to go and influence your organization, they have that track as well. So I have any questions about this? It's a lot of testing, but I definitely felt it was worth it. No. Yes, sir. 
a third of PMP, mm -hmm. uh, that in addition to testing, you, you're required to have a certain number of years of experience. Mm -hmm. Do any of these other certifications require um, that experience background also? Um, I have forgotten CISSP. I don't know about SEC plus, but these ones right here, there's a certain order to them. You should start with GSEC, and then kind of go into GCIH just to make sure that you get it. And then you go into GCIA. But other than having those prerequisites to make sure that you understand the concepts, no. They'll go and teach you. They'll go and offer you courses as well. So, so where are we? The essentials of what you want out of talking with me today. How do you get started? This is another instructor from the Sands Institute. He does a great job helping people understand security in their organization. He talked about how do you get started. These are the four elements that he took a look at, and I'm very thankful for Lance. He talks about coding, systems administration, applications, networking. They all come together, touch one another in some way or some fashion. So I feel that I'm pretty good when it comes to networking, in systems administration, coding, I can read if it's really written well and has a whole bunch of documentation. Otherwise, I'm just kind of guessing. And applications, no idea. So we all come from certain strengths, certain backgrounds, but it's here to go and help you. Code Academy is free. So if you're looking for places to go and start, if your kids or grandkids have not started coding now, another great place to go and start. Highly recommend it. I cannot tell you that enough. And then systems administration, I use a Mac, so it's sort of like Unix, sort of like Linux. It's helped me kind of understand. I came from a Windows world all the time. I like it. And I also have to run Windows as well. And the last part is the applications that you run on your phone. That's where we're going. It's just an app. It's just a web app. That's where we're going in IT for now. But again, it comes down to this. 29 and a half hours. 1,200 questions later, you can do this. So I'll talk to you about what you can do, next steps. Do I have any questions before I round out? I have about five minutes, I believe. Perfect. Perfect. Cool. Yes? One of the trends in professional development is micro-credentialing. Is that a phenomenon in the information security world, the concept of, of short, very short, very compressed, but very specific training and credentialing that results in some type of usually digital uh, recognition, if your LinkedIn profile and so forth. Do you see that in, in this world at all? I would say yes, if I can see if I can relate. A lot of your certifications, SEC Plus, you can go on an hour and a half later have that type of test, if that helps. Okay. Um, there are, uh, Vendor trainings, yes. Now I see where you're going with this. Vendor trainings. Everyone has the one black box that's gonna solve all your problems when it comes to information security. Everyone's got it. So why haven't you bought it? And a lot of people have. Because when you start to go back through this type of training, you can say, well, this firewall doesn't go to the endpoints such as your computer, in a sense that it's not sitting on your computer verifying if that code's actually genuine or not. It should have caught it at the beginning of the network before it came in, but if somebody takes a USB drive and plugs it in your computer, did I not just get around that firewall? That's the type of stuff that you can get is those trainings to these different vendors, and they're out there. And that type of training is good to go and show that you are understanding across the entire enterprise, or all I do is data security in a cloud data center. That's huge. Car hacking, that's gonna be huge as well. Those certifications haven't been written yet. But the data center and the firewall certifications, that type of training, it's there for you. Just, just for clarification, everything you've described sounds very technical. Mm -hmm. But we have room for people that have a very background, some of the very non-technical. Do, do they have to become a very, learn these things to, uh, technically in depth in order to? No. Uh, it, is, I, it just seems like the impression, yep. it, it sounds like you have to become a very technical person. So. You don't, I've chosen to. Here's my rationale why. If you get the concepts, do you have to be the person pushing the buttons? No, but from your background, that person pushing the buttons 
really has to understand their effects. Let's go back to the Facebook example. Do you really think when somebody allowed somebody to have access to all that data, they thought anything bad would come of it? No, because if they did, they wouldn't allow people to have access to the data, right? But with your background, you can say, hey, technology is only increasing the speed in which people can access data and information and share and communicate. But should we allow them to have access to this data? And if you say no, and it makes sense, you've just prevented that bad publicity from your background. Whether it's in supply chain or whether it's in anything else that you do, you have that ability. But we're looking for you to have that mindset that what happens if, worst case scenario. And this kind of helps you in information security. Does that help? Do any of those certifications develop that mindset thing? Yes. Which ones would be? I would recommend um, GSEC is a great place to start. There's actually one certification below GSEC. Um, the GCED is um, the, the Enterprise Defender. Yeah, that, that will help give you a wide volume. But also, SANS has a complete management act <coughs> that takes into it. I didn't talk anything about law. That might be a problem in information security. So knowing the law and knowing certain things, they do address that as well. And having that high level thinking to look down. Okay. How about uh, writing policy and things like that? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think my time is up. I will go and tell you that if you would like, is anybody not on Twitter? Uh, oh, please get on Twitter. It's so much fun. You will find all that stuff that I just listed, all those people I would like to thank. I've only met a handful of them. But they've inspired me to keep going because I thought, you know, coming out of the Marine Corps, having a technical background, what can I do in information security? There are people who are vastly better without that technical side. It's all that information them. on this. On what's right? Um, Twitter's not, but I am on Twitter, and that would be because I did like a few of them. Um, and also, if you would, uh, Tom as well, that's my email. Okay, hit me up, we'll talk. Mm -hmm. Cool. Good. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. On behalf of 40 Plus, we have some mementos to fill up your desk and fill up your coffee cup in the thank morning. You. you think about us. I really appreciate it. Great. Thank you. Once again, thanks everyone for coming. We have one or two new people who, are, who have joined us for the first time.